I think the uh, setting was uh, was made when when he in his opening remarks used the term overheating. I think that's pretty clear when he talked about really the parameters of the debate, which is either inflation slightly below the Fed's 2 percent target or overheating. And those are the kind of tail risks. That's very different from how Janet Yellen started her term, where there was a real deflation risk. And that's changed in part because of the fiscal stimulus that's out there, better economic growth, better growth overseas. And then he sort of open the door for this fourth rate hike by essentially saying, you know what, we're going to meet in March. We're going to take a look at our forecast for rate hikes this year. And it's possible that it could change from the average being three right now. Overall, he was upbeat on the economy and also increasingly confident inflation will return back to the Fed's 2 percent target. I think the Powell premier may be marked by, uh, you know, he, he was much less uh, uh, theoretical when it came to economics. He said, you know what? Full employment's around 4%. That means it could be 35 to 4.5%. To Open the door to a fourth rate hike. More authority, clearly, when he talks about bank regulation than Yellen ever did. Much more market-centric. Twice he came along and said, you know what? It's a good policy because the market gets it. And he was asked several times by several Democratic congressmen and women this idea about inequality and concern about that. Uh, compared to how Yellen has spoken about inequality, it seems to be much less of a concern or I guess saying much less of an issue for the Federal Reserve because it can't do as much about it than Yellen ever did, Tyler. All right, we will get to uh, Greg, Yip, and Larry in just a minute, but I want to ask Nancy and then uh, Jack, uh, how, if at all, did anything, uh, uh, Mr. Powell, say, change your investing posture? Yeah, not for me. I, I think um, he, it, he said what we thought he would say. It was a little more forceful, a little more direct. Um, but I think stocks are in good shape until we see a 10-year over 4%. So real terms, let's not forget, the Fed funds rate is negative, and the 10 years just at a 1% real yield. So. Jack Ablin, same question to you. Anything you hear change what you're doing or thinking? Uh, no, nothing. Uh, I will say it did somewhat reaffirm some of the suspicions I had. We, I think that the Powell uh, legacy, or the Powell, I should say, tenure will be marked by normalization. I do think that just by shifting from a, a Bernanke Yellen uh, accommodation to this, this new chairmanship would be marked with a, with a normalization. The other thing that I was listening for was, is there a, a Powell put? Um, and the only thing I, I got a sense, there was a remark he made that said, look, the stock market is not the economy. We're here to manage the economy. Uh, and while the stock market is important to the economy, we're not here to manage the stock market. So at least that was the inference that maybe there isn't the same Powell put that we had with Bernanke and Yellen. Yeah, Nancy, it was great to hear that in a way. Also, because I, I find the market's reaction a little vexing in a sense where, oh, we could have four rate hikes this year. No Fed chief is going to come out and say, well, we're not going to raise rates four times. It's not just what he said. It's what he didn't say, correct? He can't come out and say we're not going to do X or Y. Yeah, and look, I mean, this, this economy is in such great shape. If you look at the underlying GDP growth and what companies are doing in terms of CapEx, uh, we're going to see productivity finally. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.